excited to be back. Today's episode coming at you is going to be so much fun because we're going to be talking about online dating, right? Um, something that has been coming up in the group a lot. So here we are sharing it with the entire world. And to bring forth this beautiful topic is the wonderful Stephanie Terma. And here's the great thing, okay? So Stephanie doesn't just do online dating. Let me clarify this really quick. She is going to help us with, is it safe to date online and to really talk to us about this, but that's not what she does. She runs the good love company. And if you haven't, you know, been over there, or you don't know what it is, man, this is the place where your best foot gets to come forward, right? Where you get to be your best version of yourself in your relationship, where love is what exists. And I am such a fan because as you guys know, I hold my marriage above all things. It is the most precious thing in the world to me. And to find somebody out there that isn't just talking about lust and isn't just talking about, oh, be sexy to get your man. You know what I mean? Like there's some real life stuff. There's real marriages, real relationships. And that's what I love about Stephanie. She's always bringing the truth. Um, so without further ado, we are diving in today with safety. So first of all, let's just get straight to it. Is it okay to date online? Like, what do you really think? Is that a cheapskate way to go? Is that kind of like the back door? Or is this a real thing? Tell me about dating online. I love that because I think that a lot of people have this really weird stigma yes. that it's less than for some reason. But I mean, so I grew up with that, right? Like, don't talk to strangers. And then even when I got older and I was back in the dating scene, my parents were like, oh, no, you just meet somebody in real life. Like, it was completely frowned upon if I were to get online and create a conversation. And, and what kills me is that it's the real life uh, concept that people hold on to. But what's interesting is that this is real life. <laughs> this is our new reality. This right? is our reality, right? Because when I was, so I'm in my mid thirties, when I was single and online dating, it was like plenty of fish, eHarmony, like the laptop, open up the laptop, yeah. type online. Um, and it <laughs> felt- on walks on the beach. <laughs> yeah, it was so different. It, it was not the same as the Tinder shopping for guys mm. dynamic. So yeah. a lot of people from the earlier online uh, dating are now looking at the new online dating going, whoa, like that's crazy. So you're starting to see the like, well, this online dating is more real than this. Mm. These are things we tell ourselves. These are silly stories. And the reason I say that is that you can, you can go out, maybe not right now, maybe, <laughs> but you can find an idiot in the bar, in the gym, in the grocery store just as much as you would find online. For some reason, we think that only the weirdos are online, but if you're online, you're pretty great. You can't be the only one, right? So it's a little yeah. bit of, I don't want people to judge me. It's a little bit of silliness, but online is where we are. We are a, a social species and why not explore yeah. that, you know? And so, yeah, I mean, and I'm right there. Okay, I'm lucky because I don't have to date. And I do say I'm lucky because I feel like I would be terrible at it. I'm socially awkward. <laughs> like, it just, I feel like I would be terrible at it, right? So for me, it feels lucky that I don't have to experience this transition because I do feel like, you know, the younger millennials were really in that transition where everyone before us said, no, this is terribly wrong. But then everything under us, you know, they grew up with this technology literally at their fingerprints. And we did too, right? Being on the younger side of the millennial scale, it was already conceptualized when we were young, right? Like I remember the internet coming out, but I don't really remember a world without the internet. Right? Like, I mean, I know it was there, but once I actually have this, this real life of my own, the internet was always a part of it. So yeah. it's weird to think that there's actually a way to date without online. Honestly, like in my own opinion, I think it's weird to think that maybe I would have to go in public. And then the other thing that comes up for me when I think about that, to your point of there's so many weirdos, right? <laughs> if I have to go into public, public to meet somebody that means I am wasting my time because you can only have one conversation at a time 
So uh-huh. you're going to go out for an entire night and you're going to talk to three people for like legit conversations, right? I'm not talking passerby at the bar. You're going to sit down and you're going to get to know three people max, four, four people, right? Maybe. And, and my energy is tapped. I'm drained. Right. And how many of those were bad conversations or I don't care? I'm mind like, ew, I feel like online, I could I really love that. sift through some people. I could sift through the bad apples faster. You you really can. And like, I remember when I was doing the dating app audits, um, around uh, Valentine's Day. Those are so funny. They're the best. They are. People were like mind blown when you were doing those. Well, it's just, it's so interesting because everyone's like, dating's terrible. Dating sucks. And I'm like, listen, the concept of that fear thought sucks. Mm -hmm. Because when we say dating sucks, what we're really saying is, I don't like being uncomfortable. I don't want to put myself out there. I don't want to put myself out there. (laughs) I'm terrified it's going to go wrong. So we already have this negative association. So of course the brain is going to go, fuck that. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. Back up, back up. Back up. But really it's about flipping the script. Dating is so fun. And here's why it's fun. Most people think that dating is an audition. I'm going to sit here, say the right thing. I'm not going to order spaghetti. I'm going to order a salad. I'm going to be sweet and Gosh, and I went loving. out for sushi for our first date. Right? It's so embarrassing. I was like, how? And I don't eat sushi or at the time. <laughs> and I was like, this is nasty. And I have to put this whole thing in my mouth. Like, I was mortified. And so I didn't eat. And I went, I remember going out afterwards because I was like, I just didn't even know how to tell him, like, I think fish is gross. Like, I don't want to eat seaweed. (laughs) And he's Filipino, so, like, this is his life. His food, yeah. You know, yeah, it's his food, you know? And we always tease it's from the motherland. And it's like, I didn't eat that. I was so white girl at the time. Like, I didn't eat that. Take me to McDonald's. Don't That's the thing. Um, So, anyways, that that makes me laugh with spaghetti. I never thought about the spaghetti thing, but, like, sushi. We we, want to look and... (laughs) <laughs> the the intention is please pick me right and yeah, that's why people have like such that. a hard time because it's not about that it's it's the opposite it's about mm. saying i'm going to enjoy 1 to 2 hours with this person and i'm going to see if this person will complement my life it's like the that. opposite it's, it's not cool. sitting there going ah, i don't want to fuck it up please 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 <laughs> That's why, because of course you're not going to want to put yourself out there if the yeah. thought is, I'm going to be tortured with uncomfortability for two hours. Of course you're going to have that. So it's about saying, wait a second, let me pull back. Dating is just data collecting. It's That's about true. saying, I know who I am and I know what I want. I know what I'm here to do. Is this person going to add to that journey or is this person not? And taking the in, the intensity out of it by just saying, I'm just going to sit and observe. Do I like how I'm being treated? Do I like the body language? Do I like the connection? Do I like his style? Do I like, do you like this person, not the other way around? That's yeah. always the first step. You know, I heard this thing the other day and I just want to throw it out because it's so fitting. It was like a little meme. I don't know. I was scrolling, but I heard the voice in my head read it. So um, (laughs) it was like, next time you're feeling down about yourself, remember guys only get what's offered women pick from the room or something along that lines. Right. And I really sat down and I thought about it, but like how many women don't feel that way? Right. Like they feel powerless. Like they're going into this situation like, please pick me, like you're yeah. saying, versus, you know, I have the pick. Like, I yeah. get to go. I think of it like picking out a puppy, right? You don't have to just pick out a puppy. They're all cute. They're all amazing. They all have bad breath. They all do, you know, nasty poops good. in there, right? Like, they all have their little bad things, but they're all cute little puppies. You have to find the one that really connects with you and you feel like, okay, this is the one that I'm going to snuggle with for the rest of my life. I love that. And I know. That's so good. So if my husband ever hears this, I'm not saying that all men are like little puppy dogs, but it, when I was dating, I did have the concept of it needing, mine was so transactional though. It needed to suit me. Like it did need to work for me, but it wasn't from a worthy standpoint. 
Mm. In this, it was an egotistical worthy, right? right? It wasn't like I'm a goddess worthy. I can freely offer what I have. Instead, it was this very forceful, like I have A, B, C, and D, and you have a minimum to meet. And right. I don't have time for anyone else. Like, and I was very blunt, very straight up, like very honestly, I was nasty about it to the point where no one wanted to date me. Like everyone just thought I was a bitch. I mean, on, cause I, I mean, I was, I pushed everyone away by the time they'd asked me out. Like yeah. the moment I got the invitation, I went down their resume and I'm like, eh, 50 million things wrong. You'll never yeah. be good enough. Goodbye. Yeah. Right. But it was really my insecurity. It wasn't I worthy. Know. Like I said, it was an ego. I thought I was worthy cause I had all this stuff and you know, but it wasn't that it was, and I don't, I don't know, I guess we'd have to unpack that, but I remember what you're talking about. I remember that feeling of basically it was just a checklist. It was just yeah. a resume, but for me, it was transactional. Do you compliment me, but not in a fun way, right? Like right. when we're together, do I have fun when, you know, do I feel free? Do I, it was none of that. It was, I make this much. Can you make more than me? Yeah. I have this kind of a career. Your career better trump me. Like, I don't need to be the one walking into the room, you know, like yeah. I'm the arm piece. You get what I'm saying, right? hundred percent. And it's so funny because I talk about that a lot in terms of the spectrum, because what I tend to see is on the one end, the very like, pick me, please, please, anyone. <laughs> And then on the opposite end, what you were describing, that very masculine, yes. um, you know, I have work that I'm ignoring that I'm going to supplement by achieving. Yes. I see it all the time. That's exactly I have emotional right. shit that I don't want to look at. So I'm going to work, 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 achieve, 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 and then I'll feel okay. Yep. So we're in that masculine. So what's going to happen is we're going to repel the masculine guys we want. Mm -hmm. And then kind of attract the weenies that we're not physically attracted to. And then we go, oh, I hate this whole shit. Right. <laughs> that's so exactly how it was. I was like, no, no. That's the thing. And so you have to really get, and, th and this is why, and people may not like this, but I think it's really, really, really not a good idea to date unless you are on an active healing journey mm. because it is so um, honestly brutal when I see women going, I'm going to bypass my shit because once I have a boyfriend, I'll feel better. Yeah. So what that, ha what happens is you're dragging an innocent bystander into your mess with the assumption that his presence is going to somehow fix you. But and two people weigh more than one. Like you sink faster. hundred percent because you are still attracting, like when you are in your resume checklist masculine deep down you were rejecting any type of emotional connection yes because when we put wall barricade barricade wall 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 that says to me you're not in a space you still got work to do and the same goes for when you're at a place where you're like i'll take anyone i'll settle for anything mm. again that's energy leakage it is completely irresponsible to pull someone into your mess People yeah. are not here to fix you. And in fact, it's going to be a world of disaster because if you bring someone into your life and you are emotionally a, a disaster, what's going to happen is he's either going to come down to that level. Mm -hmm. You will either sub, uh, subconsciously reject any help and you've now taken someone into your mess that didn't ask to be there. So yeah. I always tell people, if you notice you're on that really masculine or um really desperate scale it's not the time right it's just not the time and and it would be far better to take six months and mm -hmm. say i'm deleting my apps i'm not doing anything and i'm going to take an honest look at myself because you have to partner with yourself and this is the yes. eye roll cliche that everyone can't no stand. but it's so true and people need to understand that say it again say it like you know the affirmation of the day for me you need to partner with yourself. I hope first. everyone heard it that time. Because like it's not it's not 50-50, it's a hundred a hundred. Yes. I am and and this is the thing, there's no real end goal because and I was talking to a client about this today where it's this idea that, well, once I'm married, mm. once I have a boyfriend, then everything will be totally okay. And I will have that that tick of like. I'm a chosen woman and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in this club. I got the bling ring. I got it all, <laughs> but the real shit happens yeah. after. So you better come correct. 
because if you don't know how to talk now, when you have a screaming baby at three o'clock in the morning and you're working on a business and shit's happening and you have no emotional foundation, good fucking luck. It's good just luck. not going to happen. Yes. You got to come correct first and don't you dare bring anyone into your emotional mess thinking that it's their job to soothe mm. that loneliness. That's so good. Cause you know, so when I met my husband, you know this, but some of the audience might not but I was a single mom at the time and I was on my healing journey. And that was why at the beginning I was so repulsive. And I, you know, I had understood that granted I was really young, but that clicked for me after a little bit of time. And once I really allowed myself to heal and go through it. And the funny thing is that my husband was always there. My husband had been pursuing me for eight, months and I kept saying no and rejecting him and pushing him away and he very kindly especially once he realized the amount of turmoil I was still in right that what I was still dealing with it something clicked in him and he did step back and he gave me the room to heal and he was actually the one that told me like you should probably you should probably work on some of this <laughs> you know but then when it finally came back to it and we went on our first date it was, it was, you know, it was different. Like it, it felt a little bit different and it was weird and, you know, yada, yada. But then fast forward to when we were like, okay, are we really doing this? Mm. You know, that was only about a three month period of time from when we went on our first date to when we decided we were going to be together. Yeah. And during that three months, still on my journey, still on my healing, the whole thing. But because of that, I was able to come with my list from a different point of view. Right? right? With a more loving point of view. My, my list made sense. I didn't need someone that was wanted to step in as a dad right away. Cause Aaliyah has a dad. She has a great dad, but I did need someone that understood that I'm a single mom yes. and that I got much Huge. going on and he's second and he'll be second, you know, because until we're married, you're not, you know, you're not my number one. She is. And I needed someone that was willing to co-parent because that was a non-negotiable for me. I was going to co-parent and I was going to do it really successfully you know, and now we're at the point where we all like rent cabins together and like <laughs> hang out. Like it's awesome, but I needed something. And had I not been available for my own mm -hmm. healing, I wouldn't have known what I really needed out of a man and out of a Huge. partner. Right. Cause I was Huge. looking for the wrong things. I was looking for the paycheck or whatever, but what I needed was somebody that would be there when co-parenting got hard that could say, I'll go pick her up today. So you don't have to look at him. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, like I can oh. be nice when you would, when you can't. That is so, so, so important. And I love what you said because I always tell people it's not about if people don't like this, but I kind of like that. <laughs> that's where that's where you get the change. That little that little friction. When I tell people to toss your list, that's why because before we are in relationship, we have mm -hmm. an idea of what we want. And, and it wasn't serving me, obviously. Look at the track record before my because, husband. <laughs> but think, but it, but it's it's about the motivation. When I was single, I was looking at the shiny happy couples yep. and not looking at what it takes to do that. Or I'm watching mm -hmm. TV and I'm going, that's a relationship. So I have this vision of what I thought I wanted. And what ended up happening was that I got what I needed. Mm. And that's why I tell people your, your arbitrary egotistical list is really not going to be effective because you don't actually know what you need until you experience it. And that's why it's so tricky. And that's why dating is so fun because you have to go, okay, this I guy, love that you, you're like, oh my God, it's so fun. <laughs> it is fun. It's so fun because it's it's a puzzle it's about saying okay so tonight i'm i'm going out for coffee with todd i'm gonna sit down with todd and have a latte and i'm gonna see how my body responds i'm gonna see if my central nervous system is okay i'm gonna see if he moves out of the way for the old lady i'm gonna see if he picks up the check i'm gonna see if he asks about me and even if he does all of that if i don't feel that pulsing Maybe he's a friend, maybe not. Tomorrow, I'm going out with Steven. We're go like, it's fun. Go and say, mm. okay, I like this, mm, not so much. I really felt great here, mm, interesting. That is the best part because we don't actually know what we actually need until we're in it. I thought I wanted a chatty, um, 
older, you know, my old story about how we're going to live in a brownstone in New York and write successful journalism, we'll drink gin martinis and talk about life. Nope, not a chance. At that what time, did you do that from? like a 70s movie, <laughs> it was because I was in my 20s. I was a freelance writer. I had the very boho, um, you know, drinking wine every night, chain smoking, the artistic, yeah. wistful vibe. That's who I was. So at it's that so time, cool. I'm like, oh, yes, I want that. And now I realize that's not at all what I want because we would be in competition. Mm. It would be, I know this, well, I know this. I have this, I have that. And it would be masculine. Yeah. What I needed was someone who was quiet, mm. not as outgoing, grounding, all the boring qualities that I was like, this is so boring. But now yeah. it's so important. And you can't know that until you lose the expectation of what it's supposed to look like. Mm-hmm. Because when we see these shiny, happy Instagram couples, they don't tell you that we had an argument three hours ago Mm. or, you know, he were in a healing journey or he was a douche two nights ago, or my kids were screaming and fighting, or we haven't had sex in two weeks, or there's this, there's that. No one talks about that. And so it's really about saying, who am I? And I know I'm on a tangent, but it's so important to understand you have to know who you are, what you need, what you're about first. Yeah. So if you are having bad luck in dating, it's because your own signal is just silent. You need to turn the cab light on, right? When you're in New York City, cab light, available, beautiful. If your cab light is off, good. Do your healing work, figure out what do I want versus what do I need? Mm. You need to be able to say, this looks nice, but is this sustainable? When we're 50 years old and our kids are moved out and it's just him and I in the house, do we have anything to talk about? Yeah. Is he supportive of my dreams? Because people will change. So it's about figuring yourself out first and then having fun with it. Like it's fun. Mm -hmm. Dating is blast. I I love dating. I love that. And I just want to point out really quick because I think this is so important. You don't have to be ready to date right? Like you, you touched on this, but I do want to make sure everyone really heard what you said because there are different seasons. Like dating is fun. And if you're in the right state, you're in that right season, embrace the season. That's Mm -hmm. awesome. But if you're not for whatever reason, and the reasons are your own, if you're doing the healing, if you're just at that place where you're feeling like, I don't need somebody extra. I just, I want to have this adventure, you know, whatever it is, do not feel like you have to date, you know, don't, I felt, because I remember feeling that way, and I feel like, you know, my stories are so outdated. They're just, are they even relevant right now? But I remember feeling like that as a single mom. Like, you know, I had to make the decision, and I remember making that decision even when I broke up with my ex, was, you know, I am literally choosing to be a single mom, or I'm choosing not to be, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I have to choose that. And when I decided, I went fully forward, knowing every single thing that came with being, you know, a single mom. And that was okay. Right. That was my season. And that was my journey. And, but I just feel like that applies to dating. Okay. You're not, not everyone's ready just because you're, you broke up and you've been broken up a week or a month or there's no timeline there. It's not a one thing, right? Like some people date right away. Some people need a year. Yeah. I just feel like it it is. And and it's so interesting. And like, I, it's funny because I loved dating, but I dated egotistically as well. I'm sure you, you, and I'll I'll share with your audience briefly. People don't realize we're friends behind the scene, but just in case, you know, for anyone that's new to my podcast, most of the people on here, I've been friends with a really long time. It's very rare. I have someone on that. I don't have like a full personal life with. So Stephanie and I have been in each other's lives. What? Four years couple yeah. kids, you know, the yeah. whole thing. <laughs> and it's so funny because I remember I dated for food and to go out. I, I was me that one time. I was living in my old apartment. I was like in, like in my prime, like 25, 24, 25, 26, right around there. You would laugh. You used to tell these stories and just laugh so hard. I just want to point it out. Like you would just roll when you realized the things that you were, you it's, were doing. Man, I would go on plenty of fish and I would rack up dates. Cause I, had, I, I was working part-time at a cosmetics boutique 
mm. making like 1800 bucks a month, mm. just barely making it. And so I would date so that I could eat and I could have drinks. And the problem is, is that at that time I was in a very transitional space and would drink way too much. I would sleep with people right away. Um, I would wonder like, why didn't they call me back? And so it's really interesting because I've thought about if I were to date now, right, 10 years later, how different would it be? Mm. And the reason why I bring these parallels is that the world is shifting so much and we've yes. never been more aware. And if you were in a space where you were ready to explore, we've been in quarantine, we've been in this Corona BS, everyone's like wanting summertime. Mm. This is a great time because character is always revealed in crisis yeah so people have said to me oh is this the right time is this the... i'm like there's always a right time and there's always a wrong time it's dependent on you and like you mentioned in your season when i was dating at 25 my intentions were to survive and have a good time i can also yeah. talk to anyone and i'm a chatterbox and if the date didn't go well i would just drink it out wouldn't recommend that now <laughs> Not the dieting advice we're giving. <laughs> no, but now it's about saying, okay, there's a lot going on in the world. How am I responding to it? Who am I through this? Mm. Am I open and vulnerable? Have the current events touched me in a, in a new way? Am I exploring sides of myself I've never seen? If so, beautiful. Because the people you're going to call in are going to resonate with those new bits and pieces that you have found through this mm. time. So I always want to kind of bring that up. Intention. What is your intention? Are you looking to even the score? Are you dating for um, attention? Are you mm. just trying to, you know, get your ego fixed? If so, you will attract the wrong people and have a tough time, but that might be your learning. Now it's about saying, okay, what's the truth that I'm not telling myself? Am I ready to be all in? I always tell people, if he knocked on your door right now, do you have the literal space? Is there room in your closet? Do you have a large bed? Is your place clean? Can you literally invite someone in? If mm. no, start there. If yes, beautiful. These are little tiny steps and it's just about awareness. What is my intention? These are human beings, right? Yeah. This manipulative garbage that I see with women, I was one of them so I can call it out. If you got it, you spot it. Right. It's so brutal. Right. It's so brutal. And I, I have compassion because I get it. I get that, mm -hmm. that anger. Because it is. It's sacred rage of a broken wow. heart. I don't know if I've ever, I know I've heard you say that, but for some reason, it's hitting me different today. Like that just feel like it just resonates so differently. Okay. So let's kind of unpack that just really quick. Yeah. What you're telling me though, is that all of this, you know, the anger, or maybe even for me, I'm, I'm feeling it more of like that masculine energy that I was putting off and that those demanding my weight, yeah. you know, all of that. That's really just like some type of like an internal, like a sacred frustration, like yeah. an issue there. hundred percent. I mean, it was an issue, but Yeah. We're just so not used to sitting with ourselves because here's the deal. We've been taught that there are three emotions, happy, sad, and mad. That's what we're taught. And we're taught that we're supposed to be happy. And if we're not happy, there's something wrong. Mm. So if that's what we grew up with, instead of exploring, what am I actually feeling? If we haven't been taught that, then we go suppress, 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 suppress. And if you see people day to day that just have a snarl about them, just have a tood, or they're kind of sharp, buried rage, buried, 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 because our feminine mystique is flowing and open, and here I am, and, this is what, and it takes a while to get there, and we all express it differently, but our natural state is not snippy, um, rough, Mm. masculine because what ends up happening is we don't get what we're doing mm. we just start to feel I gotta drive I gotta push I gotta go I gotta achieve um instead of going what's the truth I'm not telling the truth is I'm pissed yeah. how dare you how dare you come into my life storm it up and fuck off how dare you 
We don't and it's okay that, to get to that point. Yeah, you have to. Happens. A lot of people, they, it's like almost like, oh, well, if I admit the fact that, you know, my life just kind of got blown up by whatever situation, then I'm admitting defeat or I'm admitting failure, but you're yeah. not, you're actually yes. opening the door to start your journey. Like that yes. is the starting line. That's 100%. literally the gun that goes off that says you can go. That's the pop you're hearing. It's like, oh shit, hit the yeah. fan. Okay. Now open the door and have a great life. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. And we just, that, I love that you said that because I always encourage women to really get to the truth of the situation. Because if you are day-to-day -day expressed, and your um, external world is not what you want, there is some type of mismatch. Mm. And so instead of doing this whole love and light, let's be happy, I'm not happy, I want to be happy all the fucking time, yes. we need to unpack and sit with it and go, okay, I experienced something that I've never sat down with. Like, mm. I always tell people, invite your emotion or trauma or rage over for coffee mm. and it sounds silly no. but it's like if you literally said to yourself okay sacred rage I have been ignoring you and it's coming out in my communications with people my snippiness my road rage my impatience my attitude my <sighs> <sighs> if that's how you're walking around all the time there's something you've been suppressing so if you sit and go, okay, I've noticed that I'm short tempered. I have road rage. I'm, I'm snapping at my kids. What am I ignoring? Mm -hmm. And the first thing that comes up, even if it doesn't make sense is the truth. Yes. So let's say we, let's say you do that practice and you say, okay, what am I, what's the truth? I'm not telling myself, what is this? And the first thing that comes up is always the truth. Say, okay, what's the next step? And you have these conversations. So let's pretend um, you've been ignoring your body. Mm -hmm. okay what's the next step get up go move right. have some water how do yes you that's so funny that was the first thing that came to my mind is like drink water yeah. <laughs> like get a glass of water and then totally. what's after that <laughs> and it sounds so it's like how is this related to dating how is this related to relationship but when I talk about your relationship with mm -hmm. yourself this is what I'm saying it's about understanding your internal responses yes. and this is what my partner and I do we will say, I'm currently experiencing an uncomfortable energy. Blank. Right. And that's, that's it. My husband and I, and this is just a trick and this made me think of it, but this is, you know, what we use is those are the things that get to go in the box, right? Like I am not yelling at you because I'm mad, but right. I'm bringing this to you. Like, and that's always our thing is, you know, right now I'm experiencing this and essentially whatever this is, it goes into the box and it's not that we're never going to unpack it. It's just that I am not going to like vomit all over you, right? You can throw up into a trash can and then you can dispose of the waste. I don't need to vomit on my husband. That's right. how I feel. And so whenever we're in a fight and, or, you know, sometimes I'm just rage-ish because I live in the masculine and I have only been doing the work to get back into the feminine for the last couple of years. You know, I lived my entire life not knowing that there was a feminine world. I have a mom that 100% to this day turns 50 next week and still lives in the, the masculine 100% of the time, you know? So like, I didn't know that there was another way than forcing myself and forcing my nature. And so that was something that I had to remember. And I had to, even as a communications major, like I'm not necessarily yelling at you, you know, or I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at blank and whatever it is, you know, because of course in miracles, we give the purpose to it. We give the meaning to it. So like, this is my anger, but it's fine. It's over here. And there's another pen. I can use this one to write too, you know, like totally, I love it's that. just about like, I can acknowledge this, but I can also just put it over here. I don't have to sit here and throw my pen at you or write my pen all over you. Yeah. You know? I love that so it good. Made me like, think about that, the whole like, what, like very plainly, just what is it? There's no meaning behind it. There's no, you don't have to make it into a thing, right? It's totally. not a thing. And I love, I love that you said that because when we have, um, constructive dialogue um, <laughs> there were like in in my niche the constructive conversation right um it's easier being the communicative one over here 
because my partner is still learning. He's also eight years younger than me. So all of the stuff that I figured out, choosing to be with someone almost a decade younger means choosing to support him as he figures out how he's feeling. We've never been taught how to identify emotion. Mm. So being able to say, I'm experiencing an energy. I'm not too happy about it, but it is what it is. Right. So I can either sit with it and let it move naturally. I can either have a conversation with it and ask it what it's trying to show because emotions are just neighbors. Sometimes they come unannounced. Sometimes they stay too long. Sometimes you're like, I really wasn't in the mood for this one today. I got shit to do. <laughs> this one. <laughs> ugh, like, oh, the annoying one. The one that I've been resisting, right? If you make it fun or if you find a way to say, oh, okay, I'm having a human experience neat. Ooh, I'm multifaceted. Interesting. What can I learn from this? And then learning what works for you and your partner, because mm -hmm. I can tell you this too, the dynamic of relationship will vary from couple to couple. Yes. So what works for us may not work for other people, but there has to be some non-negotiable agreements. So what I mean by that is you and your partner, and I know we're totally all over the place now, but this is, it's organic. Whatever comes just out, that's what spirit it. needs to be said. So like, I'm, it's just, it's neat. Cause you can sit down and say, okay, you and I came into each other's lives and we have this vision. We have this mission. Okay. So we, we know where we want to go. Mm -hmm. And I'm so jazzed. We both want to do this together. Sweet. So what do we have in our, in our backpack? Like, what do we have if we're, we're going to go on this 50 year hike? And the, and the mountain is that utopian, the old seniors holding hands and whatever. What's in the backpack? We need a map. We need a first aid kit. We need water. We need support. We need all these things. And, but we fill the backpack. So what do you want? How do you want to be supported? What do you want on your map? My partner is not the guy to say, here's what I'm feeling today. Here's what I'm thinking. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. He's the kind of guy that will be very quiet and maybe a little snarky, maybe a little bubbling. Like, you know, when men, they just have that, it's bubbling at the surface and you kind of go, what's the matter? You want to tell me now or we you want to tell me later, right? right? <laughs> and so you have to learn and learning about how your partner operates. We have r rules here that look like we don't go to bed in a fight because we're just going to carry that energy in the morning. There are some people, however, who do better sleeping it off, right? We do something where um, if there's ever a disagreement, both people have to take ownership of their part. Once that's done, we're good. Most people's arguments are, but you did this. No, you did this. No, you did this. No, you did this. Instead of saying, here's where I fucked up. I'm so sorry. That, that was completely my, my ego bullshit. Mm -hmm. And in a healthy parent, the guy goes, appreciate that. Thank you so much for that ownership. Here's where I fucked up. Do you want to start over? Yeah. <clears throat> so I love anyway. that. You know, people, I, I told this, who was, I don't, it doesn't matter, whatever. I remember telling someone one time though, that my husband and I have what I like to call rules of engagement, which I grew up in a military family. So rules of engagement means this is how we're going to fight. <laughs> okay? Like the loose translation is, I love this it. is what is allowed to fight to the death. Okay. But we have to have those because you're right. Like if we're in a fight, you will literally fight it forever until you know what the stopping point is. So if you already know coming into it, we both have like, you know, whenever, whenever we have a disagreement, these things happen, right? My husband knows that I need space. I'm not going to walk away, but I feel everything very deeply. And if he walks in, like if he pulls into this driveway angry, he has to leave because I can feel it before he even opens the front door, you know? Um, so there are like, and it was learning about each other and our fighting styles, our communication styles, all of the different things. And then as we went, this is not something that just happened, right? Like this, we had to learn, Yeah, we learned to put those rules into place. And sometimes it comes after the situation because it's never the situation that defines you. It's always what you do totally. with that situation that actually makes you, right? So maybe we get into a fight. I remember this happening very uh, early on, gosh, in our marriage, like right after we got married, maybe two, three months in, 
got into an argument and I left. And he was like, first of all, we are married. You never leave because yeah. we agreed we won't get divorced. Like you left me. You literally said, I'm done. And you walked out. The last things you ever said to me was you're done. That's how you want this to end. You know? And like, it, like, I mean, that was a dagger to my heart. I literally walked out of my house. And the last things I would have said to my husband was I'm done. Yeah. Totally. Like, I mean, it's so, it's so funny because you sound like my partner, like my partner is the guy who like storms off or like walks off. I think it's that earth sign. It stuff. is. <laughs> that earth sign, like, wow. whereas I, we, we, and we've had to say that too, because I remember and like full transparency, like for everyone who's listening, really healthy, happy couples have these moments behind the scenes. They just don't want to talk about it because people judge, but this is the truth. I remember when Rex was like maybe two months old, Jordan and I had an argument. We were like sleep deprived. It was ridiculous. Um, I don't even want our, to remember. <laughs> our, our second baby was an absolute psycho for the first three months. We were in and out of hospital. It was really compounded totally stress. It was so intense. And I remember there was one day where like we literally got into an argument about something so stupid as per usual. It always is. And he was like, rah, 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 and like drove off. And I remember being like, how did you ever do that? And it was one of Don't the most, laugh, but it was, it was so brutal because, and, but here, here's the part that we also don't talk about is, is our contribution to it because he did message me and reach out a couple hours later. And I was in my anger mm. and decided to not engage. So That's I made a decision he made a decision yeah. and so it was one of the most powerful days ever because i remember saying to him like we don't do that this isn't yeah like, do the whole, storming like, off it's different. speeding out of the driveway that's high school shit we are grown-ups and we have babies that are watching us and they are yeah. going to learn here's what a dynamic of a marriage looks like and i said to him i was like i know that it can feel so uncomfortable to have raw conversations but if you want that high caliber relationship that's going to last decades, you have to. You cannot ignore, push down, you know, blow off steam and then pretend like nothing happened because you can either come from ego, I'm going to run away, fight or flight, or opportunity. Yeah. Why is this showing up? How can we make this work for us? How can this mm -hmm. be another brick? in a rock solid house because relationships i always say it's, it's like a big house mm. so if you if you are it. in if you're in the attic all the time aka ignoring suppressing not there the house is gonna fall apart it's, it's gonna rot you have to come back down and ground each other mm. and really make a decision okay is is, is this behavior contributing to that mission that vision that that mountaintop that we're walking on are we taking steps backwards or are we moving forward and that's the dance that's the relationship dance every day i choose you you choose me we choose our family and all of our decisions need to be adding to that pot right right every yes. time we don't do that it's not disastrous but it does add up mm -hmm. right so it's just about being being completely mindful of that. And I think that's the, I mean, that's the journey we're all on though, right? Like as human beings, especially as women, you know, we're here innately, right? Women are here to love and to support and to really allow life to be built the way it's supposed to be built, right? Like we're the glue in a very literal way. And it's such a beautiful thing but it's hard, right? Like it's hard to take it care of ourselves hard. when we're taking care of others and we're barely having these conversations with ourselves. And now there's other people in the mix. I mean, and this, this is all of the things, right? Like, is it hard to talk about the way that you felt in that argument? Yes. But you know what? It was probably also really hard and uncomfortable the first time you had to explain that you weren't being pleased in bed, right? Mm -hmm. And the longer it went on, then it's like this weird conversation. Like, wait, we've been doing this for a year and you never told me. Can you imagine getting into a fight and like a year, two years later, your spouse is like, you know, the entire... And this is where divorce happens. This is what I think, right? The entire time we've been fighting like this and I've hated it. And 
they never said anything, you know, but we have to take, this is my own personal kind of stance. I feel like just as a woman, this is our responsibility to the future generations, right? And maybe this is the mom in me, maybe this isn't the woman in me, but that maternal thing inside of me says, I have to do better because there are generations watching, right? I have to do better because right now it's my daughter, but it's not always going to be my daughter. What happens when her friends come over? What happens when, you know, we're doing school, whatever this and that, yeah. you know? I mean, I've already had parents pull me aside and they're like, oh, wait, that's not your husband. And I'm like, oh no, that's, that's her dad. That's, you know, like, that's my ex. And they're like, you guys get along. You guys do it. Like, you guys are sitting next to each other. You guys are laughing. Like, yeah, you know, we're friends. And I just say that to say, like, the kids are watching, right? The other mm-hmm. generations are watching, but the people, the yep. people, people out there, they're nosy as fuck and they're watching every single thing that you do. Yeah. And so this is where it's important, ladies, is like, we have to be doing this work all of the time. It never ends, you know, but you also don't have to be seven years into your journey to think that that's when you're going to make a difference or like that's when your impact starts, right? When you do the work today, when you listen to this podcast, for example, and you decide, I'm going to be more consciously aware of all of this. Like, I'm going to start thinking about what my role is. I'm going to start thinking about where I'm contributing or my energy level or, you know, the perspective I'm going into the dating situation with, right? Whatever it is, the moment that that clicked for you today, that's the beginning. But when you follow through with it next time, that's when it conceptualizes. That's when it's now like, okay maybe I'll try this, right? Like maybe this is a resource I'm going to use for my life and it doesn't work the same for everybody. Right. I mean, that's just a fair thing. I'm going to go ahead and say like, it is not the same for everybody. There's going to be people that date at bars. There's going to be people that date at coffee shops. There's going to be people that date solely online, you know, like it's going to be different for every single person and that's okay. It's just as of right now, are you doing anything (laughs) anything at all to be the next best version of yourself. And once again, I'm not talking million miles up, right? I remember you and I used to stress over that. Like the next level was like this pedestal level. And it's like, how do I climb? But that's not true. Like the best version of you is just one step better than it was a minute ago. Right. Like you don't get skinny overnight. When I lost all of the bait, like seriously, when I lost all of the baby weight of uh, the first time, well, the only time I've had a kid, all of those years ago, the thing that triggered me was that I was uncomfortable with my body and somebody said, you know, all you have to do is more today than you did yesterday. And I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, you know, um, start, you know, tonight, look at how many steps you took. Look at your iPhone and see how many steps you take. You know, we've got stairs in this big place, you know, park at the far back parking lot, take the stairs a couple extra times tomorrow. Just do a little bit more than you're doing today. You'll see. And that was seriously the best advice I had been given after the day. But that works in every situation. Totally. So going back to dating online, if right now it's feeling scary or dating period, it it doesn't even have to be online, but dating period, it's feeling scary. It's feeling, um, overwhelming. Maybe it's feeling like it's just this unstable ground. We're here to tell you it's okay. And it's safe. Um, we're here to tell you, you can do it your own way, right? Like it's not a one size fits all thing, but the biggest thing is try, like just have some fun with it. Yeah, right. totally. And I, I always tell people um, that are on the dating journey that, you know, you get to decide the narrative of this part of your life. It can be a curious excitement. We can say, hmm, what if this time I got a little curious about dating? right? It's about that little tiny reframe. And if, and that could be enough. I always tell people like the, the secret to dating is coming from curiosity, being open. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. That's dating. Do I like this? Hmm. I don't know. Do I like that? Hmm, Not so much. That literally, if you can master your own internal um, compass and actually listen to it, you will have so much fun because you won't be operating from this leaky energy. Mm. You'll be able to kind of pull it back in and say, okay. And I always tell people like, if you are deciding that dating is, is you're kind of ready to get back the, the dating scene, give yourself like a week and say in this week, 
I'm going to practice what it feels like to prepare the energy to be with a person. So what I mean by that is get new sheets, um, self-care every fucking night. Um, do you have the physical space? Do you have the emotional space? Mm. Prep yourself because Here's when cobwebs. Well, and it's like, this is the thing is that you'll find the truth because as you're doing this, and I've told this to people, if you do your week exercise and you find that you're like, mm, mm, then you're not ready. Yeah. But if you find yourself going, okay, ooh, ooh, I can, I can go to HomeSense and I can pick out some new sheets and I'm going to have a relationship soon. And like, oh my God, like I'm going to like summer love, like, holy shit. Ah, see Feels the different. difference feels very different. So before you do anything, take a week. Imagine that in a week's time, you're going to get a knock on the door. And, and nothing's going to change in a week, ladies. Like it's, I, I feel like there's somebody out there right now that's listening to this and they're like, oh, nothing's going to change in a week. Like put the phone down, put the internet down, get off social media if you have to. Like if that's going to be the deterrent and that's the thing that's keeping you in this rut, like get rid of all of it for the week one week is not take long. yeah because because this is your starting point like it's, it's about saying if i'm in a confused place that means i'm not able to assess my internal wisdom hmm. so don't date if you can't assess your internal wisdom because dating is about data collecting it's about going oh yes mm, mm, mm. so if you don't have your own um like compass working mm -hmm. then that's the first thing to do seven days what if I'm in a relationship this month? I could be in a relationship this month. How does that feel in your body? Are you open and curious? Or are you like, ooh, get yourself right first. Step number two. I know we're running on time, but I'm going to do one, two, three on how to get this in motion. I love it. No, the audience is going to die over this. They want your steps. Yeah. So step one, take a week and consider it field research on your actual truth like energy a personal inventory, right? A personal inventory of, of, are you actually in the space? How do you feel? What's coming up? Step number two is if you were doing the online aspect, your profile is supposed to weave a story about what you are bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I like music and pizza and laughing because that's everybody. You're not saying anything. You say, the last time I went to see Florence and the Machine, that concert made me feel so alive. I felt so connected. Music is a huge part of my life. That right there tells me way more. And a guy reading that is going to go, oh my God, I was at that concert. Holy shit. Like, I love yes, I love I that. I love that band. Like, yeah. Or someone going, it's not really my thing. You yeah, want that concert goer. <laughs> totally because and it seems so silly but that's the truth because you're looking for can i do life with this person mm. so if you and, and you say this as a business coach when you do watered down content that isn't saying anything you're not going to get anything you're not going to get same with dating so what That'd about very you people what about you is inviting what about you is fun what about you is um alluring and then talk about it and then you want someone to go either wow i could i could see myself spending a sunday night with this chick or you know what not my scene you want to be okay with people opting out tip number three when you go on dates mm -hmm. do not get drunk one drink please do not get drunk no sex no, nothing. And before I hear like, well, my cousin, sister's friend had sex on the first date. Exception. Maureen. I know, Exception. I know, I know. My husband is a nice stand for everyone who is not following through with this inside joke. I am being thrown under the bus right now. Josh was supposed to be a one night stand. He was my DD. I got drunk and went to, a Hall went to the Halloween party first. Got drunk, drove me home. He was a gentleman though, didn't take advantage of me, none of the things, realized I was drunk and was like, can we have a proper first date? And that is rare. I Don't know, expect but I'm just that saying, to happen. He, was, he was literally my rebound backup plan, one time stand. That was like, that was his label. Everyone put us together because I needed to get back out there and he was a good guy and you know, I would just be able to get back on the bus or whatever the saying is, I don't know. You know, like that was, what my husband was supposed to be 
Okay, so now that that story's out there, I am not ashamed of it. Um, Don't be ashamed. Like long journeys, so it's, there are exceptions. There but are I, exceptions, but do don't <laughs> don't aim to be the exception. Right, that's the problem. Because and I least, wasn't going into it to actually date him. Once again, it was well, a that's the difference. Set up. I that's the difference. and I had no intention of dating him that night. Exactly. I knew, like, you're gonna buy me drinks, you're gonna get me home safely, and I'm still gonna say no. <laughs> and know? that's the difference. Because had you instead gone, I'm looking for a boyfriend. I'm looking for a relationship. I'm really nervous. I'm going to have a glass of wine getting ready. I'm still nervous. I'm going to have another glass of wine. Ah, I'm drunk and on the date and he's cute and he wants to go for extra drinks. And now, you know, know, that's unsafe. Like, I just want to throw it out there and I don't drink, so I don't know. And everyone has a different limit. I get it. But I feel like just in that, the way that you're explaining that, if I'm having a couple of drinks and then I'm going out to meet somebody, that doesn't feel safe to me. Very I feel like common. I want to be aware. I want to know what's going on. And I want to be able to feel out this situation in case I need to. But, mo- but that again, the exception, because a lot of us, and Ladies. I was, uh, Hey, you know what? It's so now funny. I know why this topic was requested. <laughs> it's because we get so nervous. I was the girl. I wore a blue dress, the same blue dress to every date. I would end up drinking a bottle of wine, a whole bottle of wine, getting ready, and I didn't, um, d- I didn't drive at the time, so I would either take a cab downtown or have a guy pick me up and come to my house. I've done everything unsafe that you can possibly imagine, and it never worked out ever. That's why I'm kind of heavy-handed. I don't drink either. I've been sober for four years, but I know that nerves and confidence Mm. and fear most people will tend to go for drinks on their first date Mm. and most people don't talk about it but they blow it right no pun intended that you got me thinking really quick and i yeah we're gonna wrap up everybody that's (laughs) fine but just really quick before we do that give me some ideas as a, of a, like a safe first date, because I never even thought about that. But now I'm thinking, especially if you're someone that like, you don't know, like they might have, they might drink, you might like, right. What could we do instead? Maybe going to the bar or going out to dinner. Is it the best idea? Is there a more, um, maybe modern way to actually get to know people instead of the traditional like date oh, yeah. dinner? And you know what? I'm so glad you asked that because the best way to get to know someone is through a shared experience. So um, when you're having conversations and typically what will happen is you'll have a chat. The guy will say, this is really fun. I'd love to meet up for drinks. Yeah, let's whatever. do it again sometime. So your, your bet is to go, you know, I'm really into um, rollerblading, mountain biking. Let's go to the beach. Let's go rock climbing. Let's go do something. Mm. A shared experience will show you so much than sitting at a table with someone who's rehearsed with a buzz. And I know that we're too old for this, but let me throw out there, do not go to the movie theaters. Like, that's the only advice I can really give here. What are you going to know about somebody? Yeah, it's not, it's, you know, (laughs) it's about, like, the best. Maybe a Broadway or an opera, maybe. Something really fun, like, and and ladies. You can say, you can say something like, um, I'm not really a fan of like, you know, drinks and shit. I would love to do something adventurous. What do you think? Ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. Always toss it back. See if he can go. Yeah. Like let's go to an escape room. Let's see if he takes the bait, you know, like see if you, if you, if he says, let's go for drinks. Lazy, typical, normal, average. Right, like, and if he can't get past it, he can't come up with anything else. Exactly. This is what I mean, why I say dating is so fun, because you can extract information. So, not really my thing, not really, it's summertime, not really down to, like, spend time in a pub, but I love doing really fun things. Like, have you seen anything come up? And you can go, oh, there's there's this and there's that, and you go, amazing, I would love to do this. And then you can have your natural conversation, but if you share an experience, you will see someone's temperament, someone's mindset, someone's attitude, how they treat people, um, their, you know, money mindset. Oh, I don't want to go to an escape room. It's too pricey. Like, or 
yeah, let's do it. And then let's, you know, let's grab sushi after, right? I love like, sushi. We eat it like every day now. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, is that you can actually, you have every right as a woman to say, I don't want to do this, but I really love this. What do you think? It's stacked. So you yeah. say what you feel, you make your open-ended statement, and then you ping pong it back. A great way to drop into your feminine because you don't have the control. You've expressed, I'm not a fan of this, but I'm a really big fan of that. What do you think? The right guy who's interested is going to go, oh, okay, interesting, neat. So we're going to have fun. We're going to play with it. Maybe we'll go mini petting. Maybe there's a fireworks display on the cove. Maybe there's this. A little effort. Women always talk about, guys are lazy. There's no effort. But when you're in your masculine trying to dominate, there's no space. The best way to get that chivalrous planned effort is to shut down. You want to go for drinks? No, I don't want to go for drinks. Not I feel fan. like a lot of women are scared of that for a lot of reasons. But the one of the ones that I feel like maybe isn't talked about is the simple fact that like, what if he doesn't want to do anything else, right? Like almost like if we rebuttal or if we say no to dinner, then there's like just no date period. Right. I mean, I think it all boils down to rejection, but like, you know, what if you say, oh, I'd rather do this Then there's so many, um, female stereotypes, right? Like, oh, I'm too outspoken. I did, you know, like, but yeah. come on, just get what you want out of this it. Is, this <laughs> is the thing. There is a difference between saying no, that's mm. typical. You can say, and you can even add a little sweetness on top. You can do the Sunday style where you start with the cherry. Love that you want to do that. Really great idea. And then you go for the good stuff. I'm allergic to alcohol. I don't feel, I get a sore tummy. Yeah. Here's what I, here's what I love. I love adventure. I love, it's summertime. Let's get out. Let's go do something. If that's not enough to signal to this person, hey, I'm a woman who knows who I am, knows what I want. I'm not afraid. Because if he says, you know what, fuck him. Thank you for showing me who you are. Thank you for showing me that you basically are sending a mass text to the nine chicks you're talking to yeah. to see who's going to take the bait first. Mm. Real quality dudes love when a woman says, you know what, I like, I'm not really a fan. Like, I don't, I don't want to spend, it's a beautiful day. What if we went down to the pier? What do you think? Yeah. And you know, sometimes like, it's just not? a switch in destination too, right? Maybe yes. don't go to a quiet indoor place. Maybe is there a place that's playing live music, but you guys yeah. could sit in the back so you could talk. And But it's still interactive and an experience or a dining experience, right? Yeah. Sometimes there's like actual, um, like I think about like food festivals and stuff. Like there yeah. are things that you can do that don't have to be like you're totally shutting him down either. Um but I agree with you. I think every single time I've ever come across any guy, even still being married, when my husband says something and I come back and I'm like, no, I'm not feeling that tonight. He's always like, like, oh, well, what are you feeling? You know, like, yes. even if it's what he wanted, he'll come home and be like, I, you know, I don't want Indian tonight or I want Indian. And I'll be like, I don't, we're doing this instead. He is still like, oh, like, oh, because there's something sexy about taking charge but not necessarily being dominant. A hundred percent. I love that you said what I'm that. To say. It, it's so important because that's the dance of dating. It's about how can I find a way to be honest about how I want to spend my time and be mm. okay if another person who's still a stranger, right? We get so nervous. What if this person rejects me? He's a stranger. It's fine. It's not a thing. Take the heat out of it. If you are looking for a life partner, you have to be able to express yourself. So if he says, let's do, you know, let's grab a couple beers and you can go, I'd love to get together. I, I've been loving having this conversation and I really would love to do that, but I'm not a huge drinker. Do you like this, this, or this, right? He's still in control, but and that is you part of the voice yourself. dating thing, though, right? Is that back and forth, and yeah. that is like the getting to know them. It's Do you like this? Do you want this? Like, totally. and that is why dating online is so safe. I and just now that you're saying this, like, it's kind of 
clicking in my head is that now I get to text you or whatever, go back and forth. And mm -hmm. I can figure all of this out before I even go to an uncomfortable situation. Totally. And you this makes sense. Thought, it does. And like for, I, I know we're kind of, I could talk to you. Everyone's going to love this episode. I could talk to you for forever. Good. Um, but like going into dating, it's really about figuring out who you are first and foremost, and then asking yourself if you have the courage to hold that standard. Mm -hmm. If you can do that, and then you do that weak exercise where you pretend that there's a relationship on the way and assessing the energy, and then going through your dating profile and really saying, am I, am I clearly explaining the slice of life? that this person's going to enter and, and doing all that in tandem with your healing, let go of the outcome, surrender, have that knowing. And then the next thing you know, <laughs> just own it after that. And you're there. I love it. And I feel like this is so helpful because a lot of times and I'll just end with this, but a lot of times, you know, I feel like when I'm listening to podcasts or I'm getting advice, it kind of feels hard to apply. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really want to say that because it seems so simple, like do step one, two, and three. And it's like, okay, I can do that. But this feels so practical. I feel like this is a living, breathing you know, not just a conversation we're having, but like literally we're going through this, whether you're dating or not, this happens in every relationship, every, you know, everyone has experienced this. And one of the things I love so much about the way that you approach relationships really is just this, this super practical side of it, right? It's not, you're right, he's wrong. And I see that a lot where it's like, basically the guys are the devil, you're the goddess, and you just need to go rule their lives. And I don't subscribe to that. Um, but I love how honest you are that, you know, I see this all over your content. You don't hide from it. You know, today was a bad day. The kids were doing this. So then we got into this argument. Here's what happened. I mean, I've seen you do that and not even with the kids, but just so many times like this yeah. has happened over dinner and I was triggered and, you know, and you unveil it for people in yeah. front of them and it's magical. So I just really want to honor you for that. And anyone who isn't following Stephanie, go read her stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chicky. This was, this was a blast. I had so much fun doing this. You know, I got you. Maureen was my first coach for all the listeners. Gosh, in like 2016, I think the first investment I ever made, um, the first group program I was ever in, the first person that communicated that I could that this could happen, like I could actually do this. So it's always a pleasure to come full circle and have these chats with you. Um, like, damn. damn. I love it. I know, it's so, uh, such a sentimental moment, but I feel like that with my clients, right? When I look at them, and I'm sure you get this too, you look at them and where they're at, yeah. and it's like this, my whole heart just wants to explode. You know, every time I see you make a post, I'm sitting, I'm like, yeah, she's still online, you know? Every single time I see you on the news or whatever, I'm like, she's killing those dreams. I remember when she wrote that in her book, <laughs> you know? Oh like, my gosh. I love watching you and just everyone else from all of these years, of, you know, just really being amazing. But with that said, I am just so blessed that it was me. Like I got to speak that life into you because this world is such a better place with you doing this work. Oh and it is uh, it's just amazing to have you here doing it. Like it's so amazing. Thank so you. amazing. So everyone go check out Stephanie. We're going to have these three little steps hanging out for you. We have Stephanie linked everywhere. You've got her website. You've got her social <laughs> You've got her social medias. <laughs> like you can get connected, ask your questions, definitely dive in. If you're dating or if you're already in a relationship and you're just like, there's something happening, go check out her content, kind of get connected. And then don't be afraid to open the conversation, right? Yes. You know, the Her Reality Facebook group is always open for all the conversations and we will elaborate on this and so much more throughout this whole week. But Stephanie is an open book. She's there. Her community is popping. The ladies are awesome. So go check out the Good Love Co. And definitely dive into this conversation because this is the work that matters. Like this, <laughs> this, 
this will translate into everything you do, everything, <laughs> your business, like everything, big old bug eyes, everything <laughs> you ever do, this work does translate. So make sure that you get connected. Do not be afraid to get the help, to ask the questions, to take the step, to make the decision. Whatever it is for you today, just do it and do it with love. Yay. All Thank right, you, you guys. So, so Stephanie and I will be hanging out in the group. Come say hi and we'll see you guys later. Bye everyone. <laughs>